Hello and welcome back. This is a video I meant to make literally last week because I moved last week and moving with over 50 houseplants is pretty rough. Um, I literally have like probably upwards of 100 now. So this is like nearly 100 houseplants that I had to move with and I was not about to trust a moving company with them. So I moved them all myself and I have a little tiny Toyota Corolla. So it's not like I can just load them into the back of a truck and go. Um, so yeah, this is how I did it and what the result was because moving with houseplants, no matter how careful you are, there's always going to be some troubles. So let's see how that turned out. So for the majority of my plants, the majority of my plants are quite small. Like they're like a lot of four inch pots and then a couple six inch. I'm, I'm, I say a couple, it's more like, like 10, 15 and then the rest are like four inch pots. Um, so I put them in a bunch of like big tubs like I have one right here one sec Okay, so I got a bunch of like these kind of massive tubs from just I think Target or something um, I think I had I think four I had four filled with plants and then I had to put some plants just on the floor of my car Because they either didn't fit into the tubs or I just wanted to be a bit more careful with them um, so my husband drove all the way to our house, which was about 40-ish minutes away. So put this down. So we moved about 40 minutes away and he was driving the whole time. And I have two big plants. I have my Bromarx philodendron and my Ruby ficus tree. So those were not gonna fit into one of the tubs, so I didn't even bother trying. And those ones I had already planned were gonna sit on the floor of my car behind um, the passenger seat in the driver's seat. And me in the passenger seat, I don't care sitting cross-legged the entire time. I'll just move my seat up all the way so I can fit the biggest plant behind me. So I put my burl marks behind me and then I put my ruby ficus in front of me just on the floor. So it was kind of like squished up in there, but nothing was like too bent or broken or anything like that. And then I basically rode side saddle in the passenger seat the entire way. But um, for the rest of the plants that I had, I put them in the bins and I made sure the lid was on top of them. So they kind of got that humidity. They didn't just like get the sun beating down on top of them the entire time. Um, and the ones in the bins actually did quite well. But then also, if you've seen any of my houseplant tours or just any videos, you know that I have like a million propagations and they're all in water because I water propagate right now. So I have a lot of little vases like this that are just filled with water and like a couple cuttings and you don't want to keep roots out of water for very long, especially like if you have like peperomia cuttings because those roots are super fine and they're gonna dry out really quick and then you lose all the progress you've made on your cuttings. So I kind of had to decide what to do with those. Um, and I had a couple different things that I did to kind of like trial it out, see which method worked best. Um, so here are the two that I used. So for the first one, for like the little vases like this that had little tiny like one leaf cuttings, I just put them in the bins right like this. I didn't really do anything and I was like, if they spill water, they spill water, it's fine. Um, it's in a plastic bin, it's not gonna get anywhere and if it gets on the other plants and that's not an issue. So literally I put them in like this and then right when I got to the house, the first thing that I did was take these ones out and then top them back up with water because they're gonna lose water inevitably when you drive with them in a bin like that. And those were totally fine. I did have the bottom of actually this Mandula pothos cutting right here um, rotted, so I had to cut it back to the next node. Um, but I had two nodes on there luckily anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. And then the second thing I did, let me see if I have like a good example. And the second thing I did, and this was with like my, um, my Birkin that I had with the spider mites on it that I took care of like a couple weeks before I moved. Um, it has a lot of roots as you can see down here. There's tons of roots in there and I just these were a bit too big to be putting into the bins I just wanted that space for the rest of my other plants here, this way you can see the actual bark in here um, So what I did with these ones is I emptied the jars with uh, I emptied out the water from the jars and then I put a damp paper towel around the roots so that it kept the roots like wet and um, they wouldn't dry out that way and then i basically yeah i wrapped up the roots like gently you don't want to like squeeze it tight or anything like that and i kind of just plopped them in the top of the bin on top of the other plants which isn't the best thing to do but it did the trick and like the birkins are fine um i did this as well with my little tiny um it's a rubber tree it's a little tiny burgundy rubber tree i did it with that one and that didn't do quite as well but um, that's because ficus trees just don't like changes in environments anyways. I mean, if you've had a fiddle leaf fig, then you kind of know that they're a bit more temperamental. Um, it's not like very exclusive to the fiddle leaf. Like 
all ficus don't like being rearranged or moved or whatever. They like the environment that they're in. So I was expecting that one to not do as well, but it is what it is and it's, it might get better, it might not. It's, you can't do anything now. So basically in the bins, I literally took all my plants like this and just fit them basically like a game of like Tetris or whatever, just where they could fit. And like I said, I fit most of them pretty well. Like it wasn't really much of an issue. And then kind of the free flowing like propagations and stuff I just tossed on the back. And it, uh, yeah, they, I put two I think in the trunk of my car and then two in the back seat. And they just, we drove over and then I took them out and left them in like a bright spot in the house um, until I can move everything else in. And then that's it. That's, that was like literally the most like fuss free moving I could think of. And it worked out quite well. Um, the only real casualty that we had was actually my Burl Marks philodendron, which let me grab him real quick. So here's my Burl Marks and me back here. But it's still, I mean, you look at it and you're like, that still looks really good. It looks like it was success moving and all that. Um, but this is one that we had in the back seat when we were driving that was like not in a bin or anything. So it was kind of just like free to rock all over the place. And I thought it was heavy enough to not do that. But um, we hit a turn a bit too sharply and it completely snapped the longest stem off of this. And if you see this bamboo stake right here, that is about as long. Like the, the philodendron was like up here before past that like bamboo stake and it completely snapped when we were driving. So that is like the main casualty that we had. And, um, but it's not the worst thing because, let me put this down. It's not really the worst thing because I've wanted to propagate that anyways. So I literally got, um, let me count real quick. Got one, two, three, I've got four cuttings from that. And you can see they're so nice, they look nice. Um, and like the nodes already had some aerial roots coming out. So I think they're gonna do well, but I'm not positive if they are. Um, and I just popped them in some water after I got back. I saw that it had snapped pretty substantially. Um, so I had to put them in water and just hope for the best really. Like the main plant will be fine because it didn't damage like anything. He's probably in a bit of shock right now. So there's not gonna be much new growth for a while, I'm guessing. Um, it might surprise me, but I'm just guessing there's not gonna be much new growth there. But the cuttings seem to be doing quite well and I hope that they'll continue to do well because I'd love to have a bunch of little burl marks all over the place because it's a great plant. If you don't have one, highly suggest finding one. Um, and also if you can find a variegated one, that's extra points because they're so pretty. But yeah, that is the only casualty that we had. And when I say only casualty, it's really like only um, severe casualty that we had where like part of the plant is you know, completely cut off and everything. Um, I will say that the majority of my plants, if not all of my plants from that move have at least one or two leaves that is like bruised, broken, um, just has died off, yellowed, all that sort of stuff. And that will come no matter what, you can't really avoid that. Um, especially if a plant is like, you know, packed in with other ones, you can't really avoid them like squashing up together and some of the leaves getting caught in the mix. And then if you're taking one out and then it catches another leaf and then it pulls that leaf off, it's just like, it's a bit impossible to avoid. And then also I've said it a million times, but plants don't like to be moved around a ton. So that's why they're not gonna necessarily get out blemish free from a big move like that. If they're going to a completely different like environment where the lighting's different, the airflow's different, the humidity's different, the like temperature is different. So all those sort of things, they're going to impact your plant. You're not gonna be able to just transport it over and be like, oh yeah, it's perfectly fine. It's gonna act the exact same because it's in a completely different place. So that's just one thing. If you are moving with plants and a lot of plants, don't expect them to all look the exact same when you get into your new space because it's just, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> it's not a realistic expectation, but that's really it. I didn't do much planning or anything beforehand. Um, one thing I would suggest is when you are putting, if you're doing the bin method that I did to transport them all in like bulk, I would suggest, and I didn't do this because I wasn't very good at it, um, if you have newspaper or leftover paper, or, um, plastic bags that you're wanting to recycle, like I keep all my like grocery store plastic bags just because they give them to me so I gotta like use them in some way. I keep all those and just use them for random things around the house, but also you can use those as like packing in between. So like if you're packing pots in there, 
the pots don't like smash together and get dinged up or break or anything like that and it just makes it a bit more of a gentle ride so all the pots aren't like smashing together and it's not like such a bumpy ride for the plants oh one thing i will say when i did pack away um my plants into those bins is like some of my plants are in big pots and i keep all my plants or most of my plants not all of them in their like nursery pots and then just pop them into the cash pots but some cash pots they're not all like nice and square like this so they don't tuck away as easily like i have let me grab this one real quick this is one that got tangled to an absurd degree but i have this pot that's like a really round like big pot um for a very small like four inch pot inside and this would not have been it wouldn't have been logical to pack this away into the bin as is because it would have just taken up so much space that I could have used for other plants. So if you have ones like this, I would just take out like the actual plant pot and then put that in there and then take this like in your hand or <laughs> whatever. Um, for a lot of my pots, I transported those separately in a separate bin just because I didn't take up as much space in my car like for the pots as i did the plants because i wanted to make sure all the plants got over in one trip so that is um something i would say absolutely do if you're moving with a bunch of um plants and you can take them out of their pots like that just take them out of the pot and just save that space for yourself because it's not i mean yeah you want that extra space for more plants you don't want to <laughs> put a bunch of pots in there and then only fit like five pots in a bin so yeah, I hope that was helpful for you. And if you're moving anytime soon with plants, just be careful with them, but just expect that it's gonna, it's gonna happen. It's okay, they'll bounce back, they're fine. Um, and if they die, it's okay, you can bring them back. There's a, like, that's why propagation exists. You can always have a second go at them. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. And if this was helpful, make sure you hit that like button. And if you have any questions about what I did or how I did it or whatever, I mean, it's not super complex <laughs> in the least. But if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments and I'll try to make sure that I answer all of them. But thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.